Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part two of my Alchemy Synth tutorial in Logic Pro 10. In the last video, we looked at selecting presets in the browser, and we went over the simple controls as well. Um, in this video, we're gonna start looking at some of the advanced uh, features, and there are a lot of them, so this will take multiple videos to finish. Uh, specifically today, we will look at the sources, uh, some oscillator controls as well, um, we'll take a look at uh, our global filters as well as our source filters. Uh, and we'll take a look at our voice control and master uh, controls. Um, I have this simple backing track out here. And I want to sort of put like a synth lead on it, almost like a monophonic synth lead. So let's, let's listen to this. So that, I just, uh, all I did to create that was I used an alchemy, one of the built-in arpeggiated loops, and then just a kick and a snare and ultra beat. So nothing, nothing special. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw alchemy on my uh, soft blank software instrument down here. And for this, I'm just going to use the default setting. If you need to go back to the default setting, you can just go up here and go to uh, recall default. So that's where you're going to use just the default setting. All right, so I'm going to go to the advanced tab. And first, let's look at our sources. Um, these are essentially the oscillators in Alchemy. If you're not familiar with that term, an oscillator is essentially the element in a synthesizer that generates sound. Uh, Alchemy has four sources that you can layer together, A through D. Currently, we are in global view, which shows all four sources simultaneously. However, you can click on each individual source over here and view additional controls for that source. So for example's sake, um, just for right now, I'm going to turn off all th uh, all th four sources, well, three of the four sources. I'm just going to leave source A on. Uh, I'm also going to turn off both of these filters, as well as the LFO and sequencer modulation. And later on, I'll explain, I'll explain to you how to use the modulation uh, modules here, but for now, we're just going to... Uh, we're going to skip over them and come back to them in the next video. Again, I'm just doing this to, I want to, I want to keep the signal as simple as possible. Um, by the way, you don't want to turn off the AHDSR modulation here because it's actually controlling the, the master volume right now. And if I turn that off, what's going to happen is this, when I play a note, the key is going to just continue on forever until I uh, hit spacebar to start or stop playback or uh, mute the, uh, mute the track. So, uh, we want that on so we can we can control the release time. All right. Um, another thing I'm going to turn off are the effects units down here. So I'm going to go to effects and all these effects units I'm going to turn off. Again, just keeping the signal as simple as possible for tutorial's sake. All right. So let's look at our sources. For each source, we can control the volume, uh, the coarse tuning and semitones, the pan, as well as an effects send. Now the effects send we'll talk about later when we actually talk about the effects. So for now, I'm not gonna really do anything with that. Uh, but right now I just have this basic sawtooth sound. So it just says saw up here. This is the uh, the waveform selection. You can swap through uh, different waveforms. Uh, and some of them are, you know, tip more, you know, uh, less typical ones. Like this one's called big and dirty as opposed to something like just sawtooth. So let's listen to a couple of these. Here's a uh, sawtooth. I go down an octave. Triangle. Kind of like this metallic one. Sounds a little banjo-ish. Um, so you can control the volume of each oscillator here, or each uh, source here. The tuning. By the way, semitones are essentially musical half steps. So one semitone is like the same thing as going from C up to C sharp or C down to B. Um, 
We can also control the uh, panning. So this is kind of cool because when you start layering multiple sources together, you could have one be tuned up, maybe one tuned down, one panned left, one panned right. So you're sort of designing the sound not just um, at the waveform level, but also at sort of like the stereo level and also the, the frequency level with the, uh, the tuning. Um, like I said before, we're currently in global view, which means that we're viewing all four sources at the same time. So if we just want to view source A by itself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on A here. And we can just look at, um, at source A's controls. So in this view, you can actually see what the waveform for each one of these looks like. So that's kind of cool. It gives you a display of that. Um, all of these are called virtual analog oscillators, uh, hence the VA mode over here. By the way, um, for now, we're just going to work in VA mode. There's other modes, sampler mode, granular, formant, pitch, spectral additive. There's these other modes, and depending on what preset you have loaded, you may see some of these uh, tabs lit up. Others won't be. Uh, for now, we're just working in virtual um, analog mode, which is like a typical waveform-based um, synthesizer. It doesn't have any sam sample-based synthesis, uh, synthesis in it yet, uh, but we can actually blend these together. So we'll talk about these other modes in a, in a future video. By the way, I should mention uh, for this tutorial, I'm assuming you have some prior synthesis knowledge. If not, I highly recommend you go watch my ES2 tutorials or my retro synth tutorials because I explain the fundamentals of synthesis pretty well in there. Uh, and I'll make sure to leave links um, below. All right. In addition to uh, adjusting the coarse tuning like we did out in the global view, you can also adjust the fine tuning uh, of each oscillator, each um, source. Now, fine tuning is cool because what you can do is, in, in this case, they have it sort of paired to uh, a modulation source. Um, by the way, when you click on each knob, you will view the, the modulation target um, that is controlling that particular knob. Any of the ones with these little orange faders on them uh, have some sort of modulation going on. So don't be surprised if you see me clicking on these and then turning off the modulation down here. Again, I'm just trying to keep the uh, signal as simple as, uh, as possible. But you can use the fine tuning to create sort of like a, a chorus effect. I could take um, this metallic sound, pull it up, say, nine cents, go to source B, turn that on, and tune it down nine cents. So it creates a bit of like a, a, a like a manual natural chorus effect. Because the um, the tuning. two oscillators are just slightly out of tune. By the way, cents are one one hundredth of a semitone. So if there's uh, there's a, a hundred cents per semitone. So without the fine tuning, it's a little bit more dry. Although there are some other options over here, some detuning options that are on that are also affecting that, that detuning effect. There we go. That's real dry, real boring. All right, I'm going to pull the square wave out and go back to source A. I'll pull the detune up, and I'll explain what that does later. Um, the position and speed, we're not going to worry about for right now. These aren't going to really matter for this uh, at this very moment. Um, one thing you can control that's kind of cool is this weight knob. Uh, the weight knob controls the entrance of this oscillator, this source. So let's say I wanted this um, metallic sound to come in immediately. I'm going to put this down at zero. but Maybe I want source B, the square wave, to come in, I don't know, an octave higher. So I'll put it at 12 semitones. I wanted it to be delayed by a quarter note. You just pull the knob up and go to one quarter. And maybe I want it to be panned over to the right. And then I want um, source C here to be something else. I'll just find something. And this one I'm going to make go up. I don't know, two, we'll say two octaves, 24 semitones. And I'm gonna pan this one off to the left. I'm gonna make this one come in two quarter notes later, so it'll be a half note later. And this is completely clock synced to your tempo. So when I play a note now, we get three different entrances. Uh, let me just pull the volume of the first one up, the volume of the second one, and the third one's down. I'll turn off this FM filter here as well.
So that's really cool. You can delay the entrances of your oscillators. Um, the key scale option um, basically allows you to turn off the key scaling, which basically means that the oscillator will not uh, play higher or lower depending on how high or how low on the keyboard you are. So when you turn this off, it doesn't matter what note you play on the keyboard, um, it's all gonna be the same pitch. The only thing controlling pitch will be the, co uh, the course tuning knob. Some people like to use this to like layer a non-key scaled oscillator with a key scaled oscillator. So you can do things like, um, let me pull this back down. Let me just make the pan be center, pull the volume up a bit as well. The problem is it doesn't always sound very good. Because you get that one, you get that one oscillator in there that's always on one pitch. So uh, I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to put this back on key. Uh, the loop mode isn't going to matter right now. This is really only going to matter when we start getting into sam some sample playback stuff. So we'll come back to that later. Um, What's really, really cool about the four sources is that each one has three individual source filters. So source B has three separate source filters. Filter C, uh, uh, source C has its own filters and so on. So that's really cool. Now, these filters can be in serial or parallel. So if they're in serial, it basically means that filter one is going to run into filter two. Filter two is going to run into filter three and then to the output. Uh, with parallel, it basically means that all three are going to be split into three separate signals and then summed together uh, at the end rather than running into each other. So uh, with parallel mode, you tend to get a little bit more of a balanced sound. With serial uh, filters, you tend to get more of a, um, uh, more of a, a noticeable effect on, on, the, on the sound, especially if you're using like, you know, like a low pass and a high pass at the same time. You can actually accidentally cut the signal out. So I'm going to go with parallel for now. Um, so I'm going to go with filter one, I'm going to turn it on. The menu actually shows you the type of filter you're choosing. So all these LPs are low pass filters. So essentially a low pass is a low frequency allowing filter. So it cuts high frequencies while allowing lows. Uh, the HPs are high pass filters. So they do the opposite of low passes. They allow high frequencies while cutting low frequencies. Uh, band pass filters will uh, allow a middle band of frequencies to come through while cutting lows and highs. And then there's some other sort of character filters down here, uh, like a formant filter, a mech filter, notch filter, ring modulator, um, an FM filter. There's even a compressor hidden down here, even though that's, that's not even a filter at all. There's like even a compressor hidden down here. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's go with a low pass filter for right now. Um, the cutoff frequency in a low pass or a high pass filter is the frequency where the signal starts to sort of dip downward. Uh, it's, it's actually more specific than that. A cutoff frequency is the signal is where the signal's already been attenuated by three or by six decibels. So technically at, you know, at 5,000 Hertz here, when I pulled my cutoff down, the signal's already been cut what, by the time it's gotten to 5,000 Hertz. But it, roughly the cutoff frequency is where the signal starts to dip down. So when I pull the cutoff frequency down, we're going to hear more and more of the highs cut out. So when it's all the way up, the filter is completely open and we're not cutting out any of the highs. So down here, we've, we're cutting a lot. Up here, we're not cutting a whole lot. So let's just put a little bit in there. Now, in a filter, resonance is essentially feedback. It's feedback at the cutoff frequency. So when you pull resonance up, you're feeding back the frequency of the cutoff uh, frequency, or you're feeding back the signal of the cutoff frequency back into itself in like a feedback loop. And when you do that, if you, and you sweep your cutoff frequency around, it really exaggerates the motion of the filter. You get more of like a sweeping or like, um, uh, like almost like a whistling effect. And the drive knob is essentially just like a saturation. Uh, it just saturates the signal. It gives it a bit of like a soft overdrive. All 
All right, let's go to filter two. I'm going to try out this mech filter. Let's see what this thing sounds like. You'll notice that for the character filters down here, um, they have their own individual controls depending on what they are. So each one's going to be a little bit different. There's no point in going over all of those, but you can just play around them and use your ear. And let me th just throw the compressor on the end as well. Even though it's not really a filter. Just do like a, a 1 to 5 ratio and pull the threshold down a bit and pull the gain up. Just make it a little bit louder. Still very simple, but we've got a lot to do. Um, the send over here is an effect send. Again, we'll, we'll come back to the effects uh, in another video. All right, next let's talk about the noise generator over here. Um, the noise generator allows us to produce some pretty typical types of noise, like white noise, um, pink noise, things that are pretty uh, usual sounding noise. In fact, let me just turn the oscillator off so you can hear the noise by itself. I may have to also turn the filters off as well. So this is just white noise by itself. Um, I think it's got a, it's got some modulation effects on it here. Let's turn those off. There we go. And there's a high and fre uh, low frequency cut. We're not gonna, we're not gonna use those at all. At least for now. So there's white noise. Um, pink noise. Pretty common. Then there's, there's some other sort of interesting types of noise, like straw. Sounds like someone rustling through some straw. Radio noise. Ocean noise. It's like waves. Liquid. Uh, hair. This one's really cool. Fire. So these are some different types of noises that we're not... Usually, uh, not usually used to seeing in most synthesizers. I'm gonna layer up fire on top of my metallic sound. I'm gonna pull my filters back in. And I'm gonna just play with the volume of it and there's a low frequency cut and a high frequency cut. So you can pull these up and down to sort of band past the sig signal a little bit. All right, let's talk about some of these other uh, oscillator controls over here. The oscillator symmetry knob here um, sort of acts like pulse width modulation, uh, which basically alters the size of the wave on the left and right side of the waveform. So when you play with this, you get some interesting tones. So I'm just dialing a, 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 a spot I like. The sync knob is applying oscillator sync modulation, and you've sort of been hearing it all along moving around because it's, uh, I have uh, some controls here that are modulating it. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Um, it basically syncs your oscillator waveform with a copy of itself that can be uptuned by any number of semitones. So without going into great detail, oscillator sync synchronizes the, single, the cycle of one waveform with another. So instead of creating something that sounds like two waves in harmony or dissonance, it can boost the harmonic series at different places above the waveform and change the tone. The higher you go, the more high frequency harmonic content you get. I like the way that sounds. Uh, on the right here, there are some uh, typical unison options that most synthesizers have. Um, there's the number is just the number of voices of this oscillator that are layered on top of each other. So if I go to 10, that means there's 10 instances of this waveform layered on top of each other. At this point, it just makes it louder. But if you detune those oscillators from each other, that's what the detuning knob does. You get sort of a, a warm chorus effect. <laughs> Of a, a width uh, it has almost like a width to it. You don't want to go too much though, because if you pull it way up, it's gonna just start to sound out of tune. 
So we'll just use a touch of that. All right, so I like that sound. That's just one source. So let's go back to global view and let's create another source. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play with this for a bit, get three new, three additional sources uh, layered on top of here. I'll, all right, off screen, I just uh, created three more uh, sources, source sounds that I liked. Um, basically what I did is I took these two sort of outer voices that were sort of a little bit thinner sounding. I panned one hard left, hard right. I layered that with the sort of brighter sound in the center. And actually, I'm going to pan this one slightly over to the left. And then my original sound. It's got a really com complex tone. Um, so now that I have these four sounds layered up, uh, I'm going to run them through these two global filters. These function just like the filters uh, in the individual sources, except that these two filters receive the sum of all four of these sources, so they're not individual source filters. Um, these also can be in series or parallel, but what's cool about these is um, you can sort of vary uh, you can like vary the series in parallel, so you can sort of blend them together a little bit better. So all the way to the right is fully serial, all the way to the left is fully parallel, so that's kind of cool. All right, um, for now, don't worry about the main effects knobs. Uh, these, we'll come back to these again when we start talking about the effects. So let's just, the sound's a bit bright for my taste. It is a lead, but I don't want it to be that bright, so I'm going to just try a low pass on here. Pull the cutoff down just a touch, but I am going to take all these modulation effects out of the cutoff and resonance. There we go. Let's see if we can do something else with this other filter here. Let's use, um, no, let's use the compressor. Let's use the compressor Just com and hit it again with some more compression. Again, just turning off all these modulation targets over here. By the way, if you see one of these meters go to red, let's see if I can get one to go to red like that. It just means that the that source or that at that point at that stage in the circuit, if you will, the uh, signal is overloading or clipping. So it means you need to pull the volume down. All right, cool. So I got the filters in. Um, on the right are some master controls. There's a master volume. Again, this is what was uh, originally showing these original modulation um, targets over here that I told you not to turn the, the AH uh, DSR off. You want to keep that one on. Um, you have a master uh, pan control. So you can control the pan of the entire synth. Uh, there's a master coarse tuning. So this is actually kind of cool, like, if you know how to play something in C major. A little higher. But you need to be in, I don't know, B flat major. You can take the course tuning down two semitones and it moves us down two half steps. So now what I'm playing in C is actually being played in B flat. So it's a good way to get around um, maybe not knowing how to play in one particular key. I'm not going to use it, though. Uh, there's also a fine-tuning knob. I'm not going to use that at all. They've got to go into an LFO, which sort of modulates the pitch um, a little bit, but I'm not going to use it. All right, the uh, voice controls control the number of voices um, that can be played at once. So, for example, something like 16 voices is polyphonic. You know, you can play chords. And I need to pull my buffer size up. Seems to be a running a running trend here with uh, Alchemy having to increase my buffer size in order to keep uh, keep Logic happy. Part of it, you know, part of it's also the simple fact that I'm running a, a screen capture software at the same time too. It's 
pull the quality down to good. Uh, let's put the view at 125 so you can see a little better there. There we go. Um, so yeah, something that's like 15 voices you can play chords with, right? Um, if you want this to be like a monophonic instrument, which I do because I want it to be a lead, you can set the number of voices to one. So now when you play uh, more than one note, the second note cancels out the first note. So you can do sort of like pedaling riffs. And you can do sort of arpeggiated riffs. And generally, like, leads will sound better when they're monophonic. You can also make, um, you can also make mo uh, monophonic um, instruments legato. Um, technically, you can make other ones legato, too, but when you choose legato, it pretty much changes the number to one, so. It basically just doesn't re-trigger the note when you play a new key um, that was, like, an, had, like, an overlapping um, envelope. So if I play two notes close together... You don't hear like the pop in the attack um, on the second notes. Um, you can also, believe it or not, you can actually change the number of voices for each individual source. I'm just going to do legato one for all of them because I want this to be a synth lead. I don't want it to be a pad. So, But it's kind of cool that you can actually individually control um, each source. So you could make, you know, the overall voice count 16, but then you could make you know, source A only be able to play three notes at a time, and so you can limit its uh, its um, its voice count and make it you know partially monophonic or or not fully polyphonic. Uh, you can also adjust the uh, pitch bend right here. I'm going to make my pitch bend up B12, my pitch bend down B12, which is an octave up and an octave down. And really, this only sounds good when you have legato mode on but you can uh, adjust the glide amount and glide time. So if you want a little bit of glide between notes, you can pull the glide knob up. You can do things like that. Um, you can actually adjust this um, re in relative values and rate or fixed values for time. Um, if you use rate, it tracks the glide in a percentage. So basically, if I have two notes that are closer together, and I have two notes that are further apart, it's going to take more time for the glide to get up to the top note because the uh, glide rate is relative. Glide time gives us a millisecond uh, value, so it's a little—it's not completely fixed, but the distance between two notes has less of an effect on the actual glide time. So even though those two notes were an octave apart, they basically glided up uh, at about the about the same amount of time. All right, so let's um, let's set the quality of this to ultra, and hopefully I don't get any pops and clicks. Um, let me play with the filter just a touch here. I don't want that much glide on it though; just a touch, touch of glide, almost almost nothing. There you go. And let me play a little something on top of my musical idea out here. Let me just practice this real quick. Let's go down active. I'll do that. So here we go. quantize the playback here. Pretty much just all eighth notes. There we go. And I'm just going to pull up a little bit of the 
pull off one of the filters that was in here. Just pull the cutoff up a bit and the resonance up and the drive up a bit. Do the same thing here. It's just not, oh, that one wasn't even on. It's not quite gargly enough. Let's see what that sounds like. All right, cool. So keep in mind, um, at this point, we've really only tapped about 10% of Alchemy's potential. Uh, in the next video, I'll get into the um, the modulation controls. We'll get into the uh, the LFO, the envelopes, the sequencer, etc. Uh, I'll also get into using the effects units, and hopefully, if we, if we have time, we'll get into use the, uh, using the arpeggiator. At that point, we will pretty much have learned all of the synthesis modulation elements. Um, and then after that, we can start talking about these different modes that the uh, the oscillators can run in. And those modes really do a lot, especially the sample one, because we can start manipulating samples with synthesis as opposed to just using uh, wave-based uh, synthesis like we did for this video. So keep in mind, we've still only tapped about 10% of Alchemy's uh, potential. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.